Transition curve is a transition gradually changes of the radius from the tangent line till the simple circular curve. So when vehicle enter or leave a circular horizontal curve, the gain or loss of centrifugal force cannot be affected instantaneously considering safety and comfort. In such cases, the insertion of transition curve between tangent and circular curve warrant consideration. So there is no abrupt change from the straight road to the curve. So the curve, the radius will change gradually. Okay, I just give simple example. Try to imagine while you are driving a car, out of sudden, you reach a curve. What do you feel? You will feel uncomfortable. That is why this transition curve is very important. And a properly designed transition curve provides the following advantages. First, a natural, easy to follow path for drivers such that the centrifugal force increases and decreases gradually as a vehicle enters and leaves a circular curve. Because at a simple circular curve, the centrifugal force will constantly apply to the vehicles. The value of the centrifugal first, uh, force is constant along the centrifugal uh, or along the uh, simple circular curve. But at the transition curve, it will uh, increasing gradually and decreasing gradually. Second, a convenient desirable arrangement for super elevation runoff. So we will look into super elevation later on. And flexibility in the widening of the sharp curve, yes. And also enhancement in the appearance of the highway. Okay, so this is the geometric property of spiral curve. Okay, spiral curve is actually a combination of transition and circular curve. Okay, beginning of the spiral curve, that is from the straight road and entering the curve at B point until point C, this is transition curve. From C to D, this is simple circular curve where the R here is constant along the circular curve. The R is constant. But how about the R for the transition curve? The R for the transition curve is keep increasing from infinity till the R value. Same goes when the end of the spiral curve from D to E, it start to decrease. The R will decrease until zero. Okay, so the angle that govern the transition curve we name as theta t so same goes this theta t so in other words the length of this tra transition curve is equal to this transition curve and the length of spiral sorry the length of the simple circular curve is governed by this angle which is alpha or you may use uh, theta delta whatever any sign okay Right, and this is the external angle. Bear in mind, this is spiral curve. Spiral curve is a combination of transition and circular and transition. So basically, it has two transition curves in one spiral curve. Okay, to determine the length of the transition curve, which is BC from B to C, B to C equal to D to E. And this is what we call as length of transition curve. And this is the formula of length of transition curve. Where V is the speed, A is acceleration, and R is the radius. Okay. So CD is the simple circular curve which can be determined by using this formula. When we use this formula, make sure the angle is in radian. So, make sure you know how to convert from degree to radian. If you use this formula, then the theta must be in radian. But if you use this 
previous uh, formula with the angle is in degree. Okay. So the total length, which is the total length of spiral curve from B to E is equal to 2 transition curve plus LB. LB here is actually the length of the simple circular curve. Okay. And the theta T here, the theta T here, the, the, the angle of the transition curve equal to L over 2R. Okay. Which L is the length of the transition curve, which can be determined by using this formula, over 2R. R is the radius.